Okay. Let's get back to where we left off. We had an argument, Rabbi Ravasi, if a person says he's the husband, is he permitted to marry or not? So Ravasi says he is permitted. Rav says he's not permitted. We've cited a Baraisa which supports Rav that he is permitted to marry. Ravasi that he is permitted to marry. Because we say the principle of Mirsas, because we say the person is afraid that he may be discovered by the father of the, of the woman, that he's not the husband. So that becomes the guarantee that he's telling the truth. Okay? We left off over there. Okay? This is where we left off. A man marries the woman. Okay? It's right mid-mark, midpoint. Reuven comes and says, I'm the husband. The father says, I don't know who the husband is. Reuven comes and says, I'm the husband. And he consummates the marriage, goes to Chuppah. A week later, another person comes and says, I'm the husband. The second party is not believed any longer. It's not believed. Now, this is where we left off. Why is it not believed? If initially they both would have come at the same time, and Reuven says, I'm the husband, Shim said, he's the husband, we don't know who to believe. But once you believe Reuven that he's the husband and he consummates the marriage, then when Shim comes says, claims now he's the husband, we totally ignore him. What's the reason? Now, we, we explain, according to the Ran, why initially did you believe him, when he, the first one, when he came, Reuven? Dovisha Berva, right? Dovisha Berva. The answer is, that that she's a married woman, we know she's a married woman. That's based on what the father says. We only have to now determine who the husband is. Once he comes and says, I'm the husband, so he's the husband. So now when the second person comes and says, I'm the husband, so what actually is he saying? We already believe him, he's the husband. So he's saying, what you're doing now is committing adultery. Right? That's what he's saying. He's not believed. He's not believed to say, and he's saying she's an adulteress. That's exactly what the second person is saying. Can't believe you. If they come initially together, now the question is, who is the husband? Is Reuven the husband, is Shimon the husband? No, so it says, both, we, don't know, we don't know how to deal with it. So both of them have to give a get, and she's free to marry. Or if one gives the get, the other person's permitted to marry her. Because we say, if he's the husband, he divorced her. If he's not the husband, so the second one's the husband. But once we accept his testimony, he's the husband, and he consummates the marriage. So we accepted his testimony, he's the husband. Now, the second one, when he comes, says, I'm the husband. What he actually is saying is, she's my wife, she's committing adultery. It's not, it's not believed. It's like a person that ate the Nevelo, after Neir Echot says something's Nevelo. It's already been established, it's not kosher. And somebody eats it, and somebody else comes, and, and, and they forewarn him. Because it was established, it was Nevelo, he's eating Nevelo. But let's say a person that ate meat, and then Neir Echot comes and say, the meat that he ate initially was Nevelo. Are we going to believe him? Of course he's not believed. Of course, what is, the, what, is the, what is the consequence of that testimony? Give the man Malchus. A single witness not believed regarding punishment. Again, if a single witness comes and says, this meat is not kosher. Robbie, listen to it. It's not kosher. The court rules it's not kosher, and the court puts out the word, it's not kosher meat. Now, Shimon now wants to go eat that meat. And they forewarn him, you eat that meat, you're going to receive Malchus. And he eats the meat, he will get Malchus. Why? Because since it was established as not kosher meat, he doesn't get Malchus. Because the testimony of the single witness was only to establish it's not kosher. What follows, follows. Correct? What about if the man ate the meat, and then afterwards, the eight echo comes and says, by the way, the meat he ate was Nevelo. Is he believed? He's not believed. At all, at any level. Because it's, it's after fact, he's not believed. Yet, need two witnesses. Definitely. Oh, he's lying. It's never established. We don't know who the husband is. Good, good. Right. Well, one give the get, and the other one's permitted to marry. Okay, good. Right. Okay. Second man. No. Once he has, if he has witnesses, and the other one, it was based on his own testimony. Of course, you believe the second person. So what do you do? 
what do, we, what do you do? The first man has to separate himself from the woman, and she's married to the second man. Because if, if there were children, they're mamzera, definitely. They're mamzera. Exactly. Rabbi already qualifies to be a rabbi. Okay. Ho'ishi shomrin niskadashti. A woman that says, I, I, married my, I, I married somebody, I accepted Kudushim someone, Veni Udas, Lamin is Kadashti. And she says, I don't remember who the husband is. And the person says, I'm the husband, I married her. Ainem on Lichnos. He's not believed to what? To consummate the marriage? Nay, she mechapa olav. Because she actually is covering. Look, the woman realizes she's an Aguna. She doesn't recall. So she's willing. To say, well, it seems to be he's the one. Does she really know? So she somehow convinces herself she's the one. Therefore, we can't trust her. We can't trust her judgment. Therefore, she's not believed. No, because there's no mirsas. Again, again, he would be, he should be believed. No different than the father with the daughter. But we said earlier, why according to Ravasi? No, 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 one second. The father says, I married my daughter off to someone, I don't know who he is. Uh, Ruven comes and says, I'm the husband. Is he believed? Yeah. Yes, okay. She says, I'm married, I don't remember who my husband is. It should be the same thing. The man who comes says, why? It's the exact same thing. Why? No. That's not what we said. No, no, that's not what we said. That's not what we said. No. No, no. Wait one second. I want to review. Okay, let's review. Okay, we'll review and we're going to lose a date. What we said on Friday or on Thursday. A husband's, a father can marry off his daughter. A father says, "I married my daughter to someone." And let's say the father would die. The woman is forbidden for the rest of her life. Unless somebody, and even somebody, unless two witnesses come and say, we, we, we were there, we know this is the husband. But if you don't have two witnesses to identify the husband, she's forbidden for the rest of her life. That's a fact. Because she's not believed as we see here. The father has to be the one. Why? So the Gemara explains, because the one who comes and says, I am the husband, he should be believed. But there's a concern, it's Yitzhak Tokpo. Maybe the man has an interest in the woman, he can take advantage of her. He'll, he'll say he's the husband, he's not the husband. But since we have a concept known as Mirsas, that he's afraid that the father may recognize that he's not the husband, so therefore that dispels the concern that he may be lying. On a Torah level, he's believed because it's not a question of changing her status. She is, a, she is a married woman. It's only to clarify, to identify who the husband is. But wait, but, but even that is the case, there's a concern he may be lying because he has an interest in the woman. Mirsas, being afraid that the father may recognize that he's not the one, that f be fearful for that, that will guarantee that he's not a charlatan, that he's not an imposter, that he's the real one, that he's the husband. But why actually are you believing him? Because he's, he's, he's believed, the Torah believes him. That's only to dispel the, the concern he may be saying he's the one because he has an interest in the woman. Okay? That's what we explained. Okay, wait. What about the woman herself? He should also be believed. Except what dispels the concern he may have an interest in the woman? Nothing. We have nothing to dispel that. Therefore, we have to be concerned that maybe he's lying. If we would have something that would dispel that as by the father, we would believe him. But since a woman is machape, she'll cover up and she'll say he is the one, although he may not be the one. Therefore, there has to be the concern, the original concern, that he may have interest in her, and therefore he's lying, and he may be, he may be an imposter. He's not, the re he's not really the husband. You still have difficulty. There's no change of status of the woman. Has to be married. She is married. But, but, but want to, I can stand there. No, because the father made the statement. The father made the statement. I married my daughter. I don't remember who the husband is. God, so what is her status? She's married. 
Okay. If a woman says, I am married, how does she have to conduct herself? Like a married woman. It's based on Shavna Shechitichi Yisura. There won't be a liability, a death penalty be there. No, that's separate. That's separate. Wait a so, so definitely she should be believed. So she's no worse than a single woman. So definitely the man should be believed. The man definitely should. I'm, I'm saying what she's saying. I'm not saying more than she's saying. I'm not saying there should be a liability, the death penalty, if I'm the husband. He's not saying that. No, but is she believed to say she's married? Yes or no? Is she believed? Yes, it is. It is. That's Talocha. Regarding, regarding her own status, the, the Besden will not allow her to marry another man. Because based on your own say-so, you're a married woman. Whatever the way you understand the concept, the principle we discuss, since she establishes a married woman, she has to behave like a married woman. So based on that, we, now we only have to clarify who the husband is. It's, it's the same, same idea. It's no worse than the father. She's established with whatever context she's believed regarding her own status. I am a married woman. Now, when the man comes and says, I'm the husband, what is he changing? He's playing into her what she said. But I have nothing to counter the, the, the concern. He may be lying because he has an interest in her. And she'll be mechapi. She's going to cover up over here. I left off la uh, last week. I was speaking about the Gemara says in, in Bab Metzio that if a person finds a lost article, the, the person has to seek out the owner who lost it. And what does the owner have to do? He has to give simonim. He has to identify it with clearly distinct identifying factors that it was his. But if he does, he says, well, I recognize it. It's mine. You know? But he doesn't identify why. He's not believed. What about a person who has Tviyas Ayin, a Talmud Chochem, who has Tviyas Ayin? He's believed. As long as we know that he always, he never exaggerates, and he's always accurate in whatever he says. He never, even, he never bends the truth. He always speaks abs absolute truth. He's believed. That's called Tviyas Ayin. What's Tviyas Ayin mean? He recognizes it. Okay? Yeah, I'm what's... I, 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 but, he, but, he, but, he has, but he has a record. He has a record that he's never bent the truth or, under any circumstance. I t once told the story, the Mer Merle Diskin, Merle Diskin, Reb Shubalev Diskin, was a level of genius, which is, you can't, you, we can't even grasp it. You know, even at Stanford University, didn't have such geniuses. So if he would look at a wall, and it had as many bricks as, had, as it had in the wall, with one glance, he could tell you exactly how many bricks were in the wall. That was his grasp. Andrew, you hear that? Okay. I think he, if, if he'd be alive, he'd be a good scholar residence for five pounds. Okay. One glance, he'd look at the wall. He'd tell you how many bricks are in the wall. So there was a story. A woman came to him with a, with a mare. She did a, a mare. She did an internal examination to see if she was, you know, whether she was uh, clean or not clean. And he brings her the cloth. And he ruled on it. Next day, she brings him another cloth. So he says to me, it's the same cloth as yesterday. She says, no, it's a different cloth. This is what you're talking about. I could tell you how many threads are in that cloth. It's the exact same cloth. And he told her exactly how many threads are in the cloth. He says, don't try to, uh, to play games. It's the same cloth. You understand? This is his level of grasp. It's photographic. It's more than photographic. It's photographic. You have to st start counting. Even if it's photographic, you got to start counting. To marry his daughter up. Not a witness. Not a witness. It's not a witness. He's believed. His statement is the equivalent of two witnesses. You know what? He would not be. She's a single woman. Her status is single. Wait a second. I understand that. Again. Wait a second. You would have, of course. No. Whoever would come and say, I'm the husband of And she would be a group. There's no husband because this, he's not believed she's married. You can't talk about a husband if she's not married. But let's say she says she's married. Is she believe, let's say a third party says she's a married woman. Does, do, do, do those words have any value? The answer is no. No. 
But if she says, I am a married woman, we treat her as a married woman regarding herself. We will not allow her to remarry. Correct? Yes or no? Yes, Wait a second. But regarding the third party, it should be no different than the father now coming. No, because regarding herself, we treat her like a married woman. Okay, Although it doesn't have the liability of a married woman, but we'll treat her like a, mar we treat her like a married woman. So what do I have to verify now? <laughs> Who is the husband? Same idea. It's the exact same thing as the father. It's with a coach game. It should be with a coach game. In a case where it has the liability of stoning. If a single person comes, he's believed, right? So a woman, when she says, I'm married, with, does not have that level of liability. A single witness shouldn't believe to say, I'm the husband. Rav, Ravazi is going to ask this question on himself in a moment. Because the Gemara is, is going to say, Ravazi is what I'm saying, is the term, it blows the roof off the house. That's the Gemara is going to use the term. In one case, the man is believed. In the second case, he's not believed. He, he says it's a coach game. If where there's liability, if Skilly is believed, so where there's no liability, Skilly shouldn't be believed, but yet he's not believed. Of course, the Gemara says, what's the reason exactly we're saying now? Of course, in one situation, we have something which dispels that he may be lying, and the other, in the, when she says she's married, we don't have anything to dispel that. The concern, he may be lying. Definitely. Definitely. Wait, 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 wait. If, if the meat is my meat, I said meat's not kosher. Now, how does everybody know it's kosher? You have to have two witnesses saying it's kosher. Yes, so you have to have two of course, of course it's kosher. But regarding yourself, you have to conduct yourself as if it's not kosher. Good, 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 good. Wait a second. But, but regarding yourself, he's not permitting. Well, for whatever reason, he's not permitted. So for whatever reason, she says, I'm a married woman. A thousand people say she's been in the room for the past 20 years. No man ever went n near her. And she's only 19 years old. <laughs> right? So, no, she's not married. She says, I am married. Right? So, if, regarding yourself, you have to conduct yourself as if you're a married woman. Similar to the meat. But regarding her own, the way she, we treat her, regarding herself, will we allow her? Will we, will, wait a second. You know, listen. Again, so what has to be verified? Who is the, but let's say we're somehow, if two witnesses now would verify that this is the husband, would we allow her to marry that man? Let's say two witnesses would come say, that is her husband. Yes. yes Wait a sec, so it's no worse over here. The Eid, we treat her vis-a-vis -vis herself as if she's a married woman. So an Eidech comes and says, I am the man, I am the husband. We're not changing our status vis-a-vis -vis ourself. We're not changing it. No, so therefore... That's, but that's for a different reason. Because she, she, she's willing to accept him even though it may not be. She, she doesn't need a status as a witness. She doesn't need it, but he has no reason to be afraid to testify. The only re There's no, he's not changing her status. Even if he comes and says he's the, it will no be, be no different than Ching Seng Amemari, there will not be a liability of death penalty. If he says, uh, when he says, I'm the husband, in that case, there will not be a liability death penalty. Because it's all based on her saying that I'm a married woman. Right? But within her context, would I believe him? The answer is yes. Because it's no different than the father saying she's a married woman. And you believe, it's, it's with a coach game you would believe him. Let's, let's go, let's move on just to drop here. Omar Avasi, excuse me, earlier. So that's the concept of, of, of Tfiyasayim. A Talmud Chochem, a Tzurmi Rabboni, he says, I recognize, we believe him. Of course, what he recognizes, he recognizes. And he, ma and he goes to Chuppah. Okay. Now, what's the difference? Two men come with each two witnesses, and they each say, she's my wife. How do we deal with that?
It's not simple. If you allow the first person to remain with her. Okay? Of course, again, um, we, we for, force the first one out also because it's a, now it's a question. Right? We don't know. Two of them, they may be, both witnesses may be lying. You don't know. No, we won't do anything. I don't, but what about, do we allow the first man to remain with his wife? Because one of the two may be telling the truth. One of the two may be telling the truth. It's tray or tray. Okay, let's not complicate it. Iboilu. Maoliskol al yodo. The father says, I married my daughter to this person. No questions. He identifies the husband. Subsequently, she commits adultery. Is there a liability of death penalty or not? Based on the statement of the father. Rav Amein Sokwin. Rav says, the father is not the equivalent of witnesses, only in terms of to prohibit it to the world. But there will not be a liability of, of skila. Ravasi Amasokli. Ravasi says you wouldn't stone. Rav Amasokli, Kiemni Rachman Olov, Lisura Lim Katol Lohemni. When the Torah believes the father would say that this is the husband, that's only to prohibit her to the world, but not to the degree that we will put her to death. Ravasi Amasokli. Ravasi says, no, you stone her. The Kuli Milsi, Hemni Rachman Olov. The Torah says she's fully believed. Fully believed. So if she's fully believed that she's a married woman, the father's believed, so if that's the case, she commits adultery, he, she has the liability of stoning. Mm -hmm. I think it would be the same thing. What about child now is born, it will be a mamzer. If somebody, let's say that mamzer now marries an ordinary person, what do you get, Malchus? Right? No, Malchus will be the same as the skilo. Right? When it says, say it's Sokolin, Sokolin must be an only death penalty. He's not believed that there should be punishment. So if, if one of the ramifications, consequences, there's illegitimacy. An illegitimate Jew has, has marries a regular kosher Jew. He's believed. He's believed. Child's kosher. Kosher. Of course, the child. No. What are you talking about? It's, it's no worse than at a wedlock. It's no worse than at a wedlock. Right? Omra Vasi. So Vasi says, Umbedino Bamers Nishkadashi Shain Sokhli. He says, Although when the father says, This is the husband, my, my daughter's married. If she commits adultery, there's the death penalty. But if she says this kadashti, if she says, I am married, and then she commits adultery, chain sokli. She's Vomer Vasi Hani Shmaitz and Didim Rafs in Greek. He says, These two statements that I've said, literally it means it blows off the roof. Meaning it's mind boggling. That's exactly what it means. It's mind they're contradictory. Why? Amrit Soklin, we said that if, a man if the father says, I married my daughter, she's married, a single witness comes and says, I'm the husband. We allow him to consummate the marriage. So in a context where if she commits adultery, it is skilo. We believe in Eid Echod, we believe a single person say, I'm the husband, that he could take it to chuppah and consummate the marriage. Mokim shibol lichnos enkones. So we, she says, I'm a Kodeshis. Where there's no lie, we believe skilo. And Odin Soklin. So definitely, there should be a liability of schema, right? Evidently, we're treating that more strictly, more stringently than the case of the father. Here, with this schema, we, we believe the man to marry the woman, to say, I'm the husband. And by Kedusha, he says, there's no schema. What do you mean? Just to the contrary. Evidently, I'm treating it more stringently. So definitely, there should be schema. Except one thing has nothing to do with another. Beloi, la'av hamni rachmon lididol lohemna. The father's believed to say she's a married woman, correct? So she's married, there's a husband. So when Eid Echot comes, he's believed. Eid Echot's believed. Because he's not changing her status. Because in reality, what is a status? A status is a married woman. And because you have the principle of Mirsas, that's Ravasi's position. 
So therefore, that dispels the concern that maybe he's an imposter. But by the woman, why do you believe her say she's married? That's Shab Nafshchetichid Yisura. It's like saying the piece of meat is not kosher. If a person, you have a thousand words saying the meat is kosher, the person says, I'm telling you it's not kosher. He's not permitted to eat meat. Same thing. In reality, she's not a married woman. If she says she's married, vis-a-vis herself, we, have, we treat her like she's a married woman based on her own say-so. So since over here now, there's a concern that, that what? The man may have his eye on her, and there's nothing to counter that concern. Therefore, he's not permitted her. It's interesting. We rule like Rab ain't so clear. That there is no liability. As Biti Nasat Lishazev, we don't give skilo. But the Torah says you give skilo. Right? It's not so simple. The Torah says that if a man consummates a marriage, he says, your daughter committed adultery. And he brings witnesses she committed adultery. So the she, he says, as Biti Nasat Lishazev, I married my daughter after this man. And he what? And he's slandering her. And he brings witnesses that his witnesses are conspiring witnesses, right? That's the whole of, of Motsi Shemra. So seemingly, you see that there's a liability of death penalty, right? The Torah says you put, it says factually if she's guilty, you put her to death. That means you're putting death based on, based on the father say so initially that, she, he, that she's a married woman. But there's no proof from the Pasha. Pasha could speaking, there were two witnesses. Initially, he married her, there were two witnesses at the, chupa, at, at the Kedushin. And subsequently, she commits adultery. What do we see from his beating of Satli Shazeb that just based on his say so, that's sufficient to rob really? You don't see anything from the puzzle. As beating of Satli Shazeb. That's after fact. Once the accusation comes about, he says it's true, she, he's my son in law, but that's what the father is saying. But how did the marriage originally come about? It was the presence of two witnesses. Take a look before the Katolo Lohemne. Take a look at Tosis. We have Toma of Oxiv, Bosa Parsha, Domer, Bidna Sadli Shazev, Soklua, Sitosis. How could Rav say there's no liability of Skilo? It says explicitly in the post of Soklua, Am le Katolo, Namni Hemne Rachmano. So we see the Torah believes him even to bring about liability of death. Yishlom Soklua, Mairi, Hecho, Dike, Eitim. The Torah speaking with the witnesses that, that he actually married off his daughter. Otherwise, what does the Torah say is beating? What does the Torah have to introduce that, that statement? As Biti tells me, Lisura, that if a father says a woman, is his daughter, was, he married off his daughter, she's off limits to the world. The Parsha, when it says Soklo, that's speaking where the witnesses on, on, the, on the marriage. Yeah. That's a, there's no response. That's what he's saying. So, I, the, so what do you do with the pasuk? The pasuk speaks with the witnesses on the kedushin. If the witness on the kedushin, that's when you put it to death. If there's no witness on the kedushin, you wouldn't put it to death. The Torah one says the sokluo is speaking with the witnesses on the marriage. That's why you're putting it to death. She's she's a bona fide adulteress. Exactly. Exactly. Because the father said, it's my daughter. It's full. It's he's fully believed. Fully believed. I mean, logically, logically, I mean, why, why, see, Rav is, is much more logical. You know, we discussed it earlier. This is what I want to bring. We rule halacha. If a person uh, buys a, a, a Jewish maidservant, Amevriya, she's a minor. David, we have this in the first parak. So it says that... And let's say right before the six years expire, right? And it's Pachs Mishavah Puto left. There's less than a Shavah Puto at the, at the end of the six year period. And he says to her, Hare at me, you have this leak. You're betrothed to me. As an Ami Vriya, she's his wife. Sid Mar says, the, it's, it's a question. Is Pachs Mishavah Puto at the end? Less than a Puto at the end of the six years. Just about to expire, less than a Shavah Puto. Mar says, it depends. 
if you hold most Rishonos for Kedushin, they knew. If initially the money that was given for Kedushin was for that purpose, so she's married, that's due to the original money. But if it's most Achronos, if he's marrying her with the service that she has to fulfill, so there has to be a Shavit Pruta. So if the last moment is Pachs Mishavit Pruta, in Bukudeshis. We rule out Locha, most Rishonos for Kedushin. They knew that the original money was for Kedushin. So if you remember, we, spoke, we mentioned then the Ravitzel Ponovich asks, when the originally man purchases the maidservant with money, right? Does he, when he gives the money to the father, does he give it for marriage? He doesn't give it for marriage. He says, I'm purchasing your daughter. Were there witnesses? There were no witnesses there, right? No witnesses there. But the man, when he gives his daughter in, in servitude, takes money, we say that most, most kedushin. How's the most kedushin? There are no witnesses. The intent was never for marriage. But when he says at the end of six years, I'm marrying her, do we say that money is the equivalent of the money that's given in marriage? That was never in his intent? You don't have to have witnesses in the end of six years. Well, you only have to have witnesses, only that he said it. That he said it. No, no, you, you have to have witnesses that he said that he's marrying her. If he never said it, then she's not married. Let's say it expires. You have to have witnesses sometime just that he said it, but it's not... Again, it's not, it's, not to, it's not to consummate the marriage. Okay? But you have to have witnesses that he sold her. That he sold her. But not for marriage. Not on marriage. Right, that he sold her originally. You have to have witnesses. Okay, I'm just reminding you. Uh, wait a minute. I'm just reminding you what we said then. So Vincent Ponovich has said like this. That when a man, a man, a daughter is in his domain. Why can't a man marry his own daughter? Because of incest. The father is not permitted to his daughter. But in terms of domain-wise, a daughter, let's say a father could nullify her Nidorim. Right? Her earnings belong to the father. A daughter is fully, is, 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 is almost like the chattel of the father. As a result of that, so why can't he marry her? The answer is because a father is not permitted to his daughter. But that relationship, that status between father and daughter, Let's say the father passes that on to a stranger. The says he could sell that status. He sells that right to a third party. When that third party buys that right, he's actually buying her that if he chooses to exercise the right, factually she's fully in his domain. So that if he can, he, the equivalent, he just doesn't say, I'm marrying you. She's already in his domain. She's fully in his domain because there's no error of it. There's, there's nothing interfering that if he chooses to act on that right, he has the right to act on that right. So it comes, out, it comes out this way. So therefore, what, what are we dealing with? So therefore, even though the, at the end of the six years, the amount of time that's left, left may be shoved, post shoved, approved, doesn't make a difference. As long as she's in his domain, he can act on that right. Therefore, that's the meaning of most who shows Kedushin. It doesn't mean to say the money was given for Kedushin. It means when the, he pay, buys her, he has the right to marry her. Because she fully entered his domain, so even at the end of the six years, even though this Pachs Mishav Pruto, he has a right to act on that right to marry her. That's that's the way he explained the Gemara. Couldn't act on it. Because the father can't act on it because the, because it's erva. But the third party, where there's no erva, he could act on it whenever he chooses. He needs nothing. He needs nothing just to say I'm interested in acting on that right that I have. So therefore, he marries her, even at the end of six years. There's no method, just saying I'm marrying her. Entering in my domain, to be under my domain, in my domain, if I say I wanted to act that you should be my wife, she becomes his wife. Of course, what is a wife? A wife is fully in the domain of the husband. That's what she is. No, the king was with the money. But it's not, it's not, it's not most Kedushin. Okay, we have two minutes. Rav Chista Omar Echot Zed Echot Zayn Soklin. Rav Chista says, whether the father says, I married my daughter off, or whether she says herself, I'm married, if she commits adultery, there's no liability of skila. Meaning Rav Chista is concurring with Rav Vazar Rav Chista Latame, Rav Chista is consistent with his own position. What is it? The Omer Rav Chista Benize Ben Teisha Shonim Biyom Echod. Now, if a minor has relations with a married woman, 
there's no liability to the minor, right? But the married woman, she's forewarned not to have relations with a child. How old does the child have to be that it's considered an act of cohabitation? It has to be minimally nine years old. How long should we see that? No. There's nothing to do with the zero. It's an act of an adultery is if a girl, boy is nine years old, it's considered an, a co it's an act of cohabitation. It has nothing to do with seed. has nothing to do with anything. He penetrates her. That's considered an act of cohabitation. That's an act of adultery. He has to be minimum. So the father says, my son is nine years old. My daughter is three years old. She's, she was married, and now an adult has relations with a three-year-old girl who was married. Married. Is it considered an act of, if she's less than three, it's not an act of cohabitation. If she's three or more, it is an act of cohabitation. So we're talking about the liability to the adult. Regarding the man that he has to be a korban, that he committed adultery inadvertently, let's say he was inadvertent, right? They have to bring a korban. It's not punishment. But in terms of punishment, definitely not. Because again, it was similar to before, it's only to establish an iser to be continued.